Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton, and I'm going to help you get that C in your GCSE. This lesson, Centre of Mass. This topic was suggested by Adam G. If there's a topic you'd like me to cover, then just leave a comment below. Now, when you're trying to work out Centre of Mass, it's fairly easy if you've got a regular shape, like a square, or a triangle, or a circle because the centre of mass of these shapes always lies on a line of symmetry. So for a square, for example, it's got several lines of symmetry. If you draw two of those lines of symmetry, the centre of mass has to lie on both of those lines of symmetry. And so where those two lines of symmetry cross over must be the only point where its centre of mass lies. It's the only place that satisfies the conditions of both of those lines of symmetry. The same is also true for the three-dimensional equivalents of these objects, things like spheres and cubes. Again, if it's symmetrical, if it's got any lines of symmetry at all, then the centre of mass of that three-dimensional object, so long as it's got constant density, or we'd say uniform density, the centre of mass of that object will lie upon a line of symmetry. So it's pretty easy to find the centre of mass of objects which have uniform density and are symmetrical. But you need to know how to find the centre of mass of objects which are not symmetrical. Such as this guy, or the Sub-Zero Attack Variant version. Now these two are not symmetrical. They have roughly a line of symmetry running down the centre, but they are definitely not perfectly symmetrical. However, they're both masses, they both must have a centre of mass, a point around which their mass appears to behave. This is the point that we can treat as being where all the mass is located for each one of these. So there's a single point somewhere where it appears that their mass is located. But how can we find that? Well, the answer is actually surprisingly simple and low-tech. If we allow our object to hang freely, the centre of mass hangs directly below the line of the string. So somewhere directly below the line that this piece of string causes is the centre of mass. So I can tell for this object, as irregular as its shape is, that its centre of mass must be somewhere down here. It must be somewhere following this line straight down. If I were to hang him from another point on his body, then we'd get two lines. And where those two lines cross over, that would be the location of the centre of mass. The good news, though, is that you don't need to worry how to do that for complex three-dimensional objects like this. You just need to be able to do it for more simple two-dimensional objects. Let me show you how. The first thing we're going to need is a non-uniform shape. So I'm going to cut one out of this piece of card. Now, as I cut it out, I'm not going to worry too much about getting anything particularly symmetrical. I'm not even going to watch too closely about what shape I'm cutting. I want this to be a really, really random shape. You could even do a shape that has a section cut out of it, but I'm going to go with this. So here we have a shape with no lines of symmetry. The next step is to give ourselves somewhere to attach our piece of string. I'm just going to punch a tiny hole in the top corner of it like that. Well, I suppose it's not even really a corner, is it? There we go. And this is where I'm going to hang it from. So with my shape able to hang freely, I know its centre of mass must be somewhere directly below this piece of string. Now let me just fix this in place, like so. And what I'm going to do next is add a line to this. Let me just grab my ruler. And this ruler has a spirit level in it, so I can make sure that the line that I'm drawing is perfectly vertical. So, the center of mass must be somewhere on this line here. This line must contain the center of mass. Now, I'm not sure where exactly on that line it is yet, but I can figure that out. Hanging my shape from another point, just here, will allow me to find a second line which must contain the centre of mass. So let's just allow that to swing freely and reach its natural position. And press that in place. And let's draw a second line on here. So 
So now I have a shape which has two lines on it, and each one of those lines must hit the centre of mass. Each one of them must go through the centre of mass because the centre of mass always hangs directly below any point which you hang the shape from. So somewhere on each one of those lines is the centre of mass, and there's only one point where they cross over, that has got to be the centre of mass. I can double check this by seeing if I can bounce it from this point on my fingertip. Just a sec. And there we go. So that was the exact centre of mass which I found. If I wasn't holding it at exactly the centre of mass, if I move it slightly to the side, then it just falls. Understanding where the centre of mass is is important when it comes to understanding how objects rotate. For example, if you've got a spaceship in orbit and it's starting to rotate, it will rotate around its centre of mass. All its mass appears to act from that single point, and the rest of it just spins around that point. This is true for planets, and it's true for stars, and it's true for entire galaxies. The entire galaxy rotates around its own centre of mass. It's also true on a smaller scale if you're looking at something like, for example, a mobile over a child's cot, where the centre of mass will be directly below the point which it's hanging from. It's also important if you're dealing with something like a man climbing a stepladder. So long as the centre of mass of the man and the stepladder together are within the base of the stepladder, that stepladder will remain stable. But if the man leans too far out to the side and puts his centre of mass out beyond the base of the stepladder, then he's going to fall over. I hope that video really helps you. If you want to check how well you understood, then try the snap quiz. The link is right here, and it'll also be in the description, along with all the other links for this video. If you want to check out my other videos, then click right here. If you want to download the free app I've made to help you with your revision, then you can click right here. If you want to subscribe to my channel, then you can click right here. Don't forget to leave likes, and if you go to the comments, you can give me feedback and let me know which topics you'd like me to cover next. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.